John Prescott has had it up to here with the English language. He's chocker, gutted. Frankly, he couldn't care less if he never meets it again. It's brought him nothing but grief. The simmering row, as between neighbours who fight over a fence, has finally come into the open. That's it. If your kid's bleeding football comes over again, I'm keeping it. Came to a head yesterday when he was talking about how he intends to spend the extra money Gordon Brown has given him. We will reduce and probably eliminate the homeless by 2008, he announced. Eliminate them, giggled a Tory. He snapped back. Well, I'm sorry, you know my problems with English. I didn't go to public school. And we realised this really is a bonkers quarrel, as if only people who went to public school can speak the language coherently. Or did he mean that using clear prose was a sort of upper-class, toffee-nosed thing to do, like owning a morning suit or playing polo? Then up sprang Nicholas Soames, the Shadow Defence Secretary. Shadow Secretary never was a politician less shadowy. His adage has always been, lunch hard and sleep easy. This week he hosted a lunch in Pool, where for just £49 guests could enjoy luscious seafood and wine. But it is a measure of how Gordon Brown's stealth taxes are wrecking havoc among the hard-eating families of Britain that the champagne was non-vintage and the Chablis only premier, not Grand Cru. But we can be assured, within one day of a new Tory administration, we will all be able to afford first-growth clarets and the finest vintage Paul Roger to wash down our crustaceans. Soames was magnificent, a vast, florid spectacle, a massive, inflatable shadow minister. You could tow him out to a village fete and charge children 50p to bounce on him. They could have floated him over London to bring down German bombers. Until last month, Mr Bryant, Labour MP for Romva, was something of a parliamentary joke. A former vicar, he was best known for posing in his knickers on a gay website. Then he was made Deputy Leader of the House, which makes him Harriet Harman's understrapper. Yesterday, she was off sick, or had been struck down by the lurgy, as Mr Bryant put it. Uh, the term comes from the goon show. A while ago, we used it in our community panto. Where's the fairy godmother? One of the witches asked. She's in bed with the dreaded lurgy, was the reply. Oh, I don't know. I quite like Italian men myself, the witch said. Yesterday, he was poised, calm and confident. He appeared to have a complete mastery not only of his own brief, no, not briefs, don't be stupid, but of everyone else's as well. Facts, judgments and statistics, some possibly true, poured out and he didn't have a single note. Sometimes he was ferocious and party political, sometimes ameliorative. He clearly loved being at the dispatch box, the centre of attention. I bet he did great sermons, even when fully clothed. Does Sir Peter Tapsell actually exist? I asked the question following his own question, nay, speech, on Wednesday, which was magnificent. It could have been a pastiche of the perfect Tapsell address. I imagined his words being carved into tablets of polished black basalt, mounted in the British Museum, etched deep, so that even the partially sighted can feel their way to his eternal wisdom. Possibly Sir Peter is a mass thought form created by Tory MPs for whom he recalls their party as it used to be and Labour MPs who wish that it still was. Certainly it is true that the whole House looks forward keenly, yearningly to his every word, rather like the moment in a Victorian seance when the eerie manifestation of a dead Red Indian appeared above the fireplace. This moment of glee was followed, as it always is, by a hushed and expectant silence.